Hey, Scott from Aristocop.com here. Let's start that over. Let me start that over. Okay. Wait, wait, wait. Let me change. Change the lights. Let's do... The lights go down. Orange. Hey, Scott from Aristocop.com here. And Seth from SethMarkwood.com. Together, the three of us, we are Markwood Men's Breakfast Club. Welcome back once again, and good morning, boy. Good morning, Homer. How you doing? I'm doing well. How are you? Good. I'm doing all right. Good. All right. So, a couple, couple simple topics, topics to talk about today. It's back. Go. And we'll also get you up to speed on some changes ahead. All right. Uh-oh. First, let's Tobacco. Start. With some um, tobacco. Gotta get Again, some tobacco in my pipe bowl. We're, we're smoking through some samples of Lane tobacco that we got at a pipe show. And uh, so, boy is grabbing a random. Make it a good one. Whiskey. Oh, whiskey. This should be good. So, um, let's see. What's going on? Well, hey, I got a new smoking jacket. Cool. You know... It, this is an ongoing quest of mine. Um, first off, I, I like jackets. I like being able to put my keys in my jacket pocket. Um, I love weather that I can wear a jacket in, although, you know, getting in the, in the summer now, not so many jacket uh, days, but a few jacket nights. But uh, I was looking for a light jacket, something maybe akin to a windbreaker um, for my trip to Germany. And I Germany? Thought, yeah, heading to Germany. And um, so I thought I'll go to Amazon and I'll look at windbreakers and then sort them by most popular, which I did. And then it hit me as I'm seeing the most popular ones, I'm seeing that they're 100% polyester. I thought, I've never given any thought to the fact that I'm walking around with my pipe wearing flammable clothing. Mm hmm. And um, I've, I've gotten plenty of burns on my shirts and, and pants, but what would happen if I set a windbreaker on fire? It's never happened, but what would happen? And uh, so the thought occurred you to me. You're going to test it? The thought occurred to me, maybe I ought to take a look at fireproof clothing. Maybe there's a light jacket there. Well, adding that term, fireproof or fire resistant, was really quite interesting on Amazon. And uh, what I learned is there's this whole category of clothing that is marketed to firefighters and EMS and police and folks that work around flammable liquids and things mm. like that, that I'd never really even considered. And some of them are uniforms, um, coveralls, things like that. And what I found was this, this line of clothing from this company called, let me look at the tag here. Um, Work, we, work right. Work right. We should not have traditional smoking jackets. We should have scientists. We should have fireproof science. Lab coats. Lab coats, yeah. That's what we should... Get big-pocketed lab coats. Like Captain Kangaroo. Yeah, or uh, slow-mo guys. Yeah, yeah, we could do that. Anyway, so I found this brand, Work Right, and um, the first thing I noticed was they were expensive. I'm talking jackets that were north of $200 and up. Mm. But there was one that jumped out at me that looked very much like a jacket I used to have that my dad had when he was in the Air Force. Okay. He had this light jacket that I loved, and I wore this thing anytime I could steal it from him. And then uh, he stole it back. <laughs> hmm. And it's something of a very, very lightweight bomber's jacket. And so they had this jacket, and it was $250. But fireproof and, and sounded like it would meet my criteria. Uh -huh. And I think it was also being marketed as a jacket that you could put a liner in it if you needed to be warmer. Or it could be used as a liner in something else. So I did what I am want to do. And I went over to eBay and took a look to see if anybody had that same jacket for sale used. And I found it. I found several people. Most of them weren't my size. Most of them looked pretty worn out. But I found this one. And let me put this thing on and we'll, uh, we'll talk about what this is. So this was a used jacket. And my size being 2X. And uh, it, it both zippers and snaps. It's got a uh, elastic waist on it. And it's not a real low waist uh -huh. on it. And it's not a real high waist on it. 
for me and what I like, it was, uh, it was just right. It has a lot of pockets mm. in it, maybe more than I want even. It has pockets here. It's got pockets here. It's got a pocket here, a real breast pocket. And uh, it even has some pockets on the inside. It also has a nice fashionable stripe on it, a black stripe. And it's fire resistant. Now, it did say it was used. And as soon as I opened up the package, I saw a label on the back here that immediately indicated to me, oh, this was a uniform. Hmm. Somebody wore this on their job and it was being exchanged and washed regularly. It had a label on it that, hmm. that was uh, from a laundry. And then I took a closer look and I saw the telltale signs of a patch. Oh, yeah that had been here and a patch that had been here. So this was somebody's work jacket. Cool. Um, what did I pay for this? $250 jacket? What do you think? You paid <laughs> $14 in a button exchange. A button exchange? Yeah. You know, you were all like, I've got $14 and a pocket full of buttons, and I'll throw in three googly eyes. What can mm. you do with three googly eyes? Yep. What can't three, you do? <laughs> three googly cyclopses. So I found this 50 one. Bucks. I found this one for, for $10. Buy it now. Though they did charge shipping, and I think I paid like $12 shipping. So for $25, let's call it. I got this jacket that oh. is fireproof. Proof or resistant? Well, yeah, let's just say resistant. Because we can put that to the test real quick. And I'm just theorizing this. It probably gets less and less resistant the more it's washed. Mm. And so this having been laundered many times, I'm not going to risk it. I'm not going to go walking into a burning building with this. But I like the idea that... Of uh, being able to walk into a burning building. It's probably less fire prone than the windbreakers I was right. looking at. Okay, so I like it. I really like it, but it's not going to serve my purposes in Germany, where I'm going to be traveling through factories and visiting as a, as a businessman, because you can see in the light where it's had the name tags taken off of it. Mm. And it's also a little bit stretched out in the sleeves. And so I went back to eBay and started searching again. And I found this exact same jacket, brand new, with the tags on it. And I paid... I Seven buttons. Think, I think $25 for the second one. Oh and that had free shipping. Wow. So this one, the one that had the patches on it, I'm going to dedicate to playing with the camper or the campfires and playing with the smoker and smoking in the shop and all that. The other one I'll keep more pristine, but I, I, I don't care if I smoke in it. Mm -hmm. I just won't make that you know, the, the beat around jacket. I am really, really pleased with this. It's nice. It looks and, good. and now that I know that this model exists, if my weight loss continues, I'll know that I can get the next size down. There, yeah. There's many, many of these on eBay. Yeah. And uh, we'll put a link to it. <laughs> And uh, I like it. Awesome. It's maybe a little warm for right this moment. Yeah. <laughs> maybe maybe so. It's, it, it, thankfully, it's cooled down a little bit. The sun has gone down. But yeah, it was a little warm. We're coming the into the season. The sun has gone down this morning? We are coming coming into the season where we're going to start complaining about how hot it is in the shop. Um, but, you know, I guess better than complaining about how cool it is. Unless you had a brand new jacket yeah. to keep you warm. If only. If, if only. I bought a jacket that w is not for smoking, but I, I took it all along my European trip. It was really nice, nice and thin. Um, was able to, uh, my company bought the jacket for me. They uh, were generous enough to tell all of us who, who kind of go to, to public events, said, uh, find some clothes that you're comfortable in um, and purchase them and then we'll have company logos stitched onto them and so i was able to get a, okay. a jacket a really nice jacket that's got a company logo on it and that is just like perfect because then it doesn't matter so much what i'm wearing underneath yeah um, that's great so yeah maybe i need to get an aristocab patch maybe. yeah 
<laughs> yeah, with googly eyes. Yeah, that's a great idea. Yeah. So nice. where I didn't have this jacket was um, when I was at your house throwing axes and uh, throwing knives. Yes. That's a segue, by the way. Yeah, it was, it was well played. Thanks. Yeah, so I can't remember if I talked about setting this up, but um, after we went axe throwing, uh, I kept thinking about how much fun it was. Um, I have had some throwing knives at my house before and have had my brother-in-law, who does a lot of construction work, have had him cut me cross sections and we'll put them in a chair and throw of a, log. The, of a log, throw the knives at them. And so um, I've been thinking about, you know, how could we rig something up? Now I was envisioning like a stand up board, uh, something that's, you know, probably four by four by four that gives you a nice big target. Um, and one day, uh, like two weeks after we, we went, he calls me up and says, hey, um, are you gonna be home this afternoon? I said, yes. I said, okay, I'm coming over, okay. He came over, they had cleared something like 38 trees um, on his site, and he he had probably 10 log cross sections that he brought, and he brought some heavy duty screws, and he said, we're rigging something up, we're gonna throw some axes. So we ran to Harbor Freight and bought uh, two, two hatchets, one for seven bucks with a, a plastic handle, one for $13 with a wooden handle, just to, to see the different type. Um, and we bought some, uh, a large, they have these carabiners that are designed or, or advertised for carrying groceries. You can clip a lot of bags in it mm. and then you have a single handle. Um, they have 120 pound capacity. They're really large. And so we have a swing set in our backyard and we had had a spot where there couldn't be a swing because it was broken. The clips were broken and they had, uh, been generous enough to purchase new hooks for us that we just hadn't installed. So, you know, uh, we've been sitting on those for a couple of months. Uh, and what did it take to get that fixed? Well, axe throwing, of course. So we... <laughs> and I noticed that you replaced all of two of them with the brand That's new. all I needed. <laughs> yeah. So we replaced those. We got two carabiners, two large carabiners. And then what we've done is we've taken these log, log sections, drilled in these huge bolts into about uh, 2 o'clock and 10 o'clock. And then using 550 paracord, we're connecting to either end and then we clip it into the carabiners. And so it's strung across um, where uh, a swing would normally be, strung across and suspended. So the cable going up through the carabiner and back down. down into the other one. Okay, That's right. And, uh, and while he was there, we even doubled up. So we had two logs suspended top to bottom. Um, and yeah, the, the system is perfect because with the carabiners, I can easily unhook the logs and hook up my kids swing set piece that they haven't had for uh, the last year. So they're happy that, that that's fixed, but then I can just unclip it, clip in the logs and be ready to throw axes and throw knives at them. And, uh, now on, I don't know, five or six different occasions have gone out, um, late at night. Late at night works better because where our house is, we uh, the backyard is uh, westward facing. And so as the sun is coming down, you're looking straight into it. Um, it's terrible. But uh, yeah, so while he was over there, I, I hooked it all up and showed him, uh, got to throw some axes for the first time. What did you think of that? So I need to get my shoulder repaired. <laughs> I've known this for quite some time and I'm about to have my knee replaced. Um, so the shoulder's on the back burner for right now, but I knew that going into this, that I wouldn't be able to throw many, but I just wanted to do this and it looked like a lot of fun. So the first throw of two hatchets and three throwing knives resulted in a total goose egg. Not a single thing. <laughs> I think maybe I grazed this, this wood, but the thing is I was throwing directly over, directly over the, the, the block. Mm. So I said to the boy, hey, can we raise that up? Sure. So we raised it up and now it's, you know, you know, almost almost at the top to where the rope is going up it's really and then right across the top and then down. What's really nice about having it be paracord is to raise it, all I had to do was just uh, put a knot in it. And so it shorted the distance. I didn't have to unhook or do anything. Now what's interesting to me, because of the way my shoulder feels, 
I'm, I'm very robotic with it. I'm very careful and not just throwing willy nilly. And so the result of that was I was getting a real consistent throw. The three knives were all together in the ground. Mm -hmm. And so I thought, well, that's kind of cool. I think we can pull this off, but I need it to be up. So um, I throw hatchet number one. It goes directly underneath. <laughs> I throw hatchet number two. It goes underneath. I throw knife number one. It goes right above and slices right through the paracord and the log comes falling down. I mean, if I had been trying to do that, yeah. I would have been super proud of myself. Yeah, it was awesome. <laughs> it was. But man, that was a lot of fun. Mm -hmm. That's so simple. It, it is. And, and, you know, the way we had been thinking about trying to rig something up and where would you put it that it was safe, it was overly complicated. For what it is, I mean, initially, Allison was worried about me throwing uh, hatchets at this kid's swing set. Um, but once she saw that, nah, it's, it's kind of hard. I mean, the worst that would happen is you would hit the wooden pose. It's a wooden cross yeah, yeah. section and, and you would hit that. That's the worst that would happen. That hasn't happened yet. Um, and so, uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's so simple. If you have access to the logs for really $20 yeah. and, and a little bit of time, just rigging this thing up, maybe, maybe call it $30 with the carabiners and, and the rope, but we have something that and you, in, were, you were throwing throwing stars at it as well. Yeah, yeah, I've I've got I've got a number of different throwing knives and shurikens, and I want to get some of the um, throwing cards, the ones that are four sided. Um, they're supposed to be really really good. Uh, I was also I, I didn't show this to you, but um, we've looked into I've, I've done some research on no spin throwing techniques, which is mm, well, we've talked about where you you're supporting the knife is for knife throwing so you're supporting supporting the knife on your finger and when you throw you release at about the top of your throw and the blade almost just slides off your finger the easiest way to practice this is to just take a knife and throw it straight down at the ground and what will happen is it will just go straight in like a dart and so uh once you kind of get a hang on it you can you can do this throwing technique with um long roofers nails or not maybe not roofers nails but uh carpentry nails so we have carpentry we have nails. we have nails we have nails these from are na nails like you'd put up a gutter no these are nails from the pergola that we're using to hold it into the ground so oh, they're they're about they're 10 spikes. inch 10 inch short 10 inch spikes yeah um and you can throw those. We, we've been throwing those into the log. That's cheap. As well. Really cheap. Um, this guy, the, the guy, if you search no spin knife throwing, he's the number one. He's, I don't know, Romanian or something, has a really weird accent and says... Uh, Unless you're from yeah. Romania, in which case he has... A, a real, weird English accent. Um, he um, he shows, shows the techniques, really interesting videos. He does a lot of reviews and things. And yeah, one of the videos is on the cheapest things you can throw. You can throw screwdrivers. Oh, sure. You can throw scissors. You can throw anything that has a good balance point, you can throw it. He, his, like, one of his top recommendations is you get these, you wrap some duct tape around them to make a makeshift handle, handle and that allows you to get the, the technique down. Now, even with the no, without no spin, so if you're not using no spin, you can spin the blade, and there are distances away from the target I think it's I think it's like seven, ten, thirteen, and fifteen feet away from the target gives you a half of a rotation each incremental dif distance, and so at seven feet it's a half spin. So you, you should be throwing it, holding the blade, throwing it straight in, and it will do a, a half rotation and hit. Once you find the sweet spot, you can hit it almost every time as long as you have any decent hand-eye coordination. The next step back, you you do a full rotation. The next one is spin and a half, and so forth. So I was doing rotational knife throwing, knife throwing with these spikes as well, huh. um, and just stick. I, I should have taken a picture. I didn't take a picture. Sticking them right into the wood. Uh, the only trick is you, you should spray it down. It should be wet. That makes it easier and it'll last longer that way. So you're spraying the wood down. Yeah, you want the the surface of the if you're doing if you're doing in regardless, you should spray down the wood because it will soften it. That allows it to stick without splitting. And so, especially when you're doing ingrain sections of logs, so cross sections of logs, you want to spray it down. We did not do that with the 
the old ones when we would sit it on a table and pretty quickly it would get to a point where it would split it's just wood yeah straight down the middle this one as long as you keep it wet this was the tip i found on an axe throwing forum on reddit um the it's something that the people that own the shops do is they they spray it down between every round so you hmm. really want it to be wet because wood as it dries it shrinks and it then mm -hmm. will split it's mm -hmm. just what it does and so having huh. that makes it easier for the target for the things to go in and it makes it more resilient as you're as you're splitting it well that was a lot of fun you know what one of the thoughts that occurs to me every now and again um, I work for an employer who does not allow weapons in the uh, in the buildings and every time I notice the sign that says that it always reminds me that if someone were to come into our business and and mean ill <laughs> ill ill motives against somebody there's no way to stop them you could tackle them throw a chair at them or something like that so every now and then I look around and just like you know noticing where are the fire extinguishers I I notice what are the things I'm going mm. to use as a defensive weapon? Yeah. And is there anything I could use as an offensive weapon if somebody else is being attacked? Yeah. And uh, maybe I need a bouquet of, of spikes at my desk. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Or, I mean, the ones, the ones that I would want in a high stress situation are going to be the throwing stars or the throwing cards because those are really hard to miss. Those are those are require very little technique. Mm -hmm. um, and they're sharp every which way they hit. Right? They're sharp, yeah. What was that movie where somebody was throwing knives in the movie, and there's one point in the movie where there's a target, and it's clear that this person sees the target and doesn't want to harm them, so he takes his knife and puts it in his hand the other direction and throws it and hits him in the head with the the, mm. the handle. I don't know. Maybe, it, maybe it was right. one of the Rambo movies or something. But yeah. it's like, you know, that's if you're that good with knives that you're able to de decide which way am I going to hold it to hit yeah. and have the desired effect, that, yeah. that's kind of cool. Now, the knives that you had, those three throwing mm -hmm. knives, those are really, really nice knives. Yeah. And they are stainless steel, and they're just yeah. stainless steel bar stock that has been cut into the shape of a knife. So there's no attached handle to them. <laughs> Actually, if you wanted to make a knife, That'd be a great way to start. You could just drill it out and put handles on it. Those are those, those are the are knives. Really nice. Those are the knives that I would want in a survival situation because they're they're sharp on the blade side and the point. For throwing knives, you don't need a sharp blade. You just need a, a little bit of a sharp point. That's why a screwdriver works just fine. Um, it doesn't have to be sharp because you're only trying to hit it straight in like a dart. Um, I have some that are dull, but those I I inherited those and uh, those. Uh, are just perfect for that application. They're ones I would love to have more of. And really, if we learned anything from dodgeball, you could throw wrenches. That's right. Um, yeah, so that's another one of the things this guy does, I think. And just like, just like uh, you know, the videos with Jim, Jimmy Diresta, where he makes bottle openers yeah, out of that, purposes, you could sharpen down a wrench really easily, and that would be a good throwing implement. <laughs> but the, these these nails are like a buck fifty a piece. Um, maybe even less than that if you buy them in bulk i think we were looking at buying a set of 10 or something uh and so you could have a pretty good set are they to already sharp with. or do you sharpen them no well, they're they're sharp enough they're they're a nail so they're sharp enough mm -hmm. to get the job done i haven't sharpened them um these i dug out of the ground i dug out of the dug out of the ground i they're right now they're rusty because i try i tried to de-rustify them with um vinegar i i had them soaking in some white distilled vinegar which is the right thing to do. The wrong thing to do is to have them not completely submerged. When you don't completely submerge them, what happens is all of the rust, instead of coming off, it moves up uh -huh. to the part that's not submerged. And so it actually, they've got like rust barnacles on them. But I was throwing them the other day with rust barnacles and all, they work just fine because the tip mm. is still pointy. Cool. All right. Well, hey, we'll uh, we'll link to that video. Why don't we go ahead and link to those knives because those were really cool. Okay. Did you get those on Amazon? No, the, the, like I said, those those were my father-in-law's. He had a, a handful, a number of knives um, that he had, and he he was a knife collector. And when he passed, we were cleaning out his storage unit, and um, a handful of the, the the knives that he had, I. I inherited. But we'll find and some so, of those because but yeah, I, they're a name brand. They're they a good were name a brand. stack of three in a sheaf. 
So yeah. together, they lift. were about the thickness of the handle of a, right. of a, of a similar like hunting knife. Right. But those were cool. Yep. All right. I don't know. I think we asked you once before, but uh, hey, if you if you're into this axe throwing, hatchet throwing, knife throwing, leave us a comment. That's it for now. Uh, next week, well, I don't know what we're gonna do. He's gonna be in Germany, and uh, I'm gonna be someplace. I'm sure. I did say we would say something about that. So we're probably going to film something using Skype or something like that, um, and and try to get together if we can. And then shortly thereafter, I'm going in for my knee replacement. And so we'll probably film some episodes from my back porch. Yeah. Uh, we'll see how that goes. But uh, we'll do our best to hang out with you each week. And we appreciate you showing up each week. So uh, right. thanks for that. With that, make it a great week. See ya. Let's see what we thought of tobacco. Oh, let's do that. What do we think of the tobacco? Okay. We haven't okay. stopped okay. filming yet. <laughs> Uh, this, I liked it. That's, that's all. It was whiskey, right? This yeah. is, um, it tastes like the standard base of Lane Tobacco, which is going to be a mix of Virginia mm. and Burley, mm -hmm. mostly Virginia. Um, it didn't mm -hmm. have any, I don't think, any Black mm -hmm. Cavendish in it at all. I don't think Probably so. had some, like, Golden Cavendish in there. And uh, and then the whiskey flavor, I don't know that I could have discerned it as being whiskey. It was definitely a flavor, but... Uh, I didn't pick up on, on much of the flavor at all. I wonder I if we had whiskey. smoked this stuff six months ago, if it would have had more of a whiskey it flavor to it. It might. Yeah. Yeah. So not exactly, the casing not exactly a fair representation of the original product, but not bad. We do what we can. You guys just were so generous and sent so much tobacco advent that your it, fault. it's kept us busy. Saying. Way to go. And then Brendan's choice, of course. You know. All right, thank you guys. We'll see you. This next is a week. real ending, right? Uh, yeah, for real. All right, bye.